and podcast brought to you by Seth there Leon, hosted by Moray Muel. Hallelujah. Today's subject is marriage and relationships. And before we start that, we want to read Proverbs, the 31st chapter, starting at the 10th verse. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband do it safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night and gives meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girdes her loins with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good. Her candle goes not out by night. She lays her hand to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretches out her hands to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She makes herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes fine linen and sells it and delivers girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looks well to the ways of her household and eats not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excels them all. Hallelujah. And with that being said, we want to go ahead and welcome in the host of the show, Moray Yemuel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the Duty of Man podcast. And of course, we're speaking on relationships and hopefully relationships that will lead to a marriage or someone who's possibly already married. That would be ideal. Just trying to give some insight to men and women because men and women do communicate 100% differently. So that being said, let's get into this. Let's learn something. All right. So how you guys want to start? Y'all got something for me off the top before I get into this? Yeah, I, I had a question I've been meditating on this week. And mm -hmm. I, uh, I want to present it to you. Um, Your mic is on. I had a question I wanted to present to you. Um, and it's in regards of Isaiah, the second chapter. Um, and the... Let's see here. What verse was that? Actually, the, the third chapter. Braden didn't ask your, your question. Yes, sir. Isaiah 3 and 12. It says, As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err and destroy the ways of thy past. My question is today, why would any woman or any Hebrew woman specifically, why would they relinquish their power to a man? Seeing that the Almighty have put them over top of us and has caused them to lead our houses. Why would they relinquish power? Well, See, that's prophecy, and that's not supposed to be for everybody. Because, see, the Almighty understood that we're the most hard-headed, stiff-necked people on the planet. Again, he said, speaking of Israel, he said, that describes us. That's right. But he also said that we were the apple of his eye. He said we were rebellious. 
but he also instructed us to find our way back to him while we while he could be found. Now that's prophecy. That's exactly what's happening today. However, if they had submitted to the Most High Yah, <clears throat> first and foremost, then they would have submitted themselves to their husbands and allowed their husband to rule or govern over them. You see, the reason we have these issues today with the children just running amok and the women just being so combative is because the spirit the spirit is not right. Mm. The spirit is a spirit of rebellion. Mm. You see, a woman's natural desire should be to her husband. But today you have women that say even if they were married, they're not going to put their husband first. Mm. And if they marry someone and they already have children, guess what? It's going to be the woman. Then she's going to put her children that she's had previously to the marriage before the husband is taking on that responsibility of taking care of that household. So you have to ask yourself, what's the reward for that man if he's going to be last? And that's just the way it is. That's the mind state of a woman. See, here's the deal. The Almighty already, he knows us, right? So he knows that we weren't going to do as we were instructed. When we were sent to this place that we're in, this United States of America. When we were sent here in the other places throughout the four corners of the earth where we were sent, we didn't adhere to the word of the, the Most High Yah. We were rebellious when we got kicked out and still rebellious today. And so the Almighty has already told us to clean ourselves up and come back. He said that he would accept us with open arms. But if an individual don't know how to accept themselves, where do, they, where do they go from there? If an individual don't know how to love themselves, then ain't nobody else got nothing coming. It's facts. Ain't no, nobody got nothing else coming. The fact of the matter is, when you have people that don't want to follow instruction, when you have people who want to write the book themselves, when they want to write their own way, they can write it any way they want to. Period. We have a lot of people in the world today, including Israel, who refuse to be held accountable. Yes, sir. It's going to be their way or no way at all. Have you ever met a, a woman who wasn't combative? In one way or another. There wasn't combative. And if you do. It's very rare. So I won't say that there's none out there. But do you know any personally. In your, in your circle. That's not combative. No. Hmm? Most women. In any relationship. Even if they allow the man to lead. You know what's going to happen. They're going to continually test that man. Mm. Think about what I'm saying. So when you read that again, read, read that again. As for my people, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. Oh, my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err and destroy the way of your paths. A lot of single parent households run by mom, right? And mom is generally going to where? To the system. That's how she got herself in that situation, you know, to where she's that single parent in most cases. She initiated the walkout. She initiated the divorce. She initiated the breakup or whatever it is because most men, especially if there's children involved, are not trying to leave their children. They will stay and try to get that situation rectified. So that they can bring their household up. Right. But see, here's the thing. The system was always designed to get the black man out the house in the first place. And women are so naive that they don't know that. They, they use, they, of course they know that. And they use the system. Listen now. 
even Hebrew Israelite women will use the system, as we say, the man, to come in and disrupt their household. So now once the woman is on some kind of government assistance, then the state can say, hey, well, that ain't his baby. That's our baby. And if he can't pay you, then don't let him see our baby. Dang. Do you understand? So then when the fathers, you have many fathers who try to see their children, but the mother may say something in most cases that's negative about the father to the child in the way of making the child believe that that father don't like him, don't love him. He's a deadbeat, this, that, and the other. Even if the child in a lot of cases is being uh, mailed letters or whatnot or trying to get phone calls. A lot of cases, the phone calls are blocked. The letters aren't received. So the child grows up believing the mess that the mother says. Now, this is not every mother that I'm talking about, but a lot of them. And they will make that child think that he don't need his or her father. Yeah. They'll make that child turn against that father. Like your father ain't this and your father ain't that. What woman in her right mind would try to destroy a child because she has an issue with the father? Ooh. Think about what I'm saying. You're destroying that child. You're taking away that child's foundation. Let me give you a good example. And this is a good segue right into what we're going to talk about today. A lot of black women that enter in relationships already going to have some issues because of the things or the abnormalities that we actually came up with. And we, as the people, like I talked about before, we tend to accept those things as normal behavior, right? Right. So say if a woman is running a relationship, but we know who's supposed to be the head of, of these relationships, especially in a marriage. So say if a woman is combative and she's not going to allow a man to lead, and that's just the way she is, right? And her children see her behaving like this in, in her relationships, right? Now, when this woman that's behaving badly in a relationship, not allowing a man to lead and just being very combative and, and just it's just argumentative all the time or whatnot. Again, ladies, I'm not talking about all. I'm talking about quite a few, though. If she has a son, when her son is of age and her son is in these volatile relationships, it's not only until she recognizes her son, her child, going through these bad behaviors, the same behavior that she may be displaying. Her son is going through these behaviors with another woman. Then she'll speak up. To let her son know that he shouldn't be <laughs> dealing with behaviors like that. He'll let her know that this woman that he's dealing with is toxic. But the son sees those same qualities in his mother. Do y'all see what I'm saying? Yeah. No, again, ladies, I'm not talking about all that, but we're going to keep this real. We're going to keep it real. See, now, if a woman just had daughters and she didn't have a son, then it's all good for her. Because she don't have to worry about her own son putting up with the kind of stuff that she's putting out to another man. Real talk. I'm going to keep it real because, see, here's the thing. Now, first of all, let's talk about some women and some men issues. Building your online business. Y'all might want to keep your, your mics on because sometimes you might forget to cut your mic on. when it Will it still pick up? Or it'll pick up from my mic if you forget to cut your mic on? Because I want everything y'all say to be heard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's good. Okay, good. I need to see it. Okay, there you go. There you go. Let, let, let's talk about some criteria for a minute, just in getting a relationship started. Can we do that? Y'all want to do that? Yeah. Check this out. First of all, fellas, this is for fellas right here. Matter of fact, it can pertain to women also, because I wrote down some things that sometimes we just don't think about. Have you put yourself in a position where you would be considered Datable, And I say that because of the times that we're in. And I was just talking about how sometimes a, a woman can see your fit, see what you're wearing. And just say, hey, you, 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 you tacky. You, 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 you might have on something that's deemed to be nice, but it don't suit her eyes. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? 
You might have just got all kinds of compliments on what you have on. And you know, you know the way you like to dress. And you know you you just spent some money. You ain't walking around with, you know, that 99 cent uh, 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 dollar store hookup on or whatever. You know what I mean? You You got yourself together. But if a woman don't like you, and let's talk about black women on what's going on with the day, then we're going to be very specific. If a black woman don't like you from what I've been seeing today, if you approach her, if she don't like you more than you like her, you're liable to be disrespected. Oh, yeah. Talk about You're liable to be disrespected. Yes, sir. And talk about the way you dressed and how dare you come and approach her and this, that, and the other, and you look like a bum or what. But let's reverse this for a second. What if a man addressed a woman like that? Dang, we'd be looked at like a criminal. <laughs> you, you, you see what I'm saying? So, see, there's a double standard, and that standard is actually getting a lot worse. It's really getting worse. And I tell you what, social media is playing a big role in it getting worse. That's what I've been hearing. It, that's it's a fact. Hearing. If you do your research, gentlemen, that's exactly what you're going to find out. And then you'll be able to listen to women out of their own mouth. Women are teaching other women, even today as we speak, that if they get into a relationship, never put that man before themselves. Mm. even in a marriage. So, again, what would be the incentive for a man to want to get into a relationship to be married? Now, another thing, when we talk about have you put yourself in a position where you'd be considered to be dateable, are you employed? Do you have finances in order? Do you have a house or maybe even an apartment? Do you own a car? Hmm? Do you have good grooming? Is your clothing appropriate for what you're trying to attract? Hmm? I think that men like to get themselves together too. We like to represent ourselves well. Yeah. Sure. You, you see what I'm saying? But again, there's even a double standard in that. Even a double standard. Let me give y'all an example. And it's going to be an extreme example. And like I say, people can do whatever it is that they like to do if it makes them feel better. But it's been accepted for a very long time for a woman to wear a wig, right? A weave or a wig. And that's cool if that's what they want to do. We ain't going to knock them for that. But let you get a bald spot, right? And say you go get you a a, 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 a lace front with some locks in it right there because you went bald back then. You got that back in there looking good. And they knew you had a ball spot, but then now you got locks right there that's still the regular length. What are they going to do? They don't talk about you, aren't they? Some will. Mm -hmm. Most will. It, 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 you see what I'm saying? So a man has always, for the most part, been a punching bag, especially a black man. Steve. See, even from the time of slavery, women saw how master would try to break the big bucks and whatnot, right? Right. Because you break them and then everybody who used to respect them, now they start losing respect for them because Master didn't have his way with them. Because Master didn't broke him. I got a question. So instead of a black woman building that black man back up, right. you see what I'm saying? Right. Because that black man has a wide range of emotions as well. Mm -hmm. See, we, they expect us to help build them up, but who's going to build you up? Who's going to build you up when... You tore down. I, I tore down. The, the person that's supposed to be closest to you should be your wife. She should be a nurturing woman. She should be a nurturing woman. She should know how to show empathy. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. You, you see what I'm saying? But a lot of times, the black man don't get no empathy. Take a survey with a, several of the black men that you know that's in a relationship. And ask them, honestly, when, when times are bad for them, how often do they get empathy from that woman that they're with? If they're with a woman. See, so we're going to keep these things in order because, like I say, black men and black women are completely different in so many daggone ways. And a lot, keep this in mind, a lot of men 
as well as a lot of women have not been taught relationship skills. Mm -hmm. So we can't take it for granted that somebody's going to get into a relationship and just automatically know certain things. Yeah, that's true. If you haven't been in a position like that, how would you automatically know things? You see, so that's it's always good if somebody wants to be, say, like in a marriage. First of all, find out what entails a marriage. What makes a good marriage? How do the wheels work on a marriage? And the best way to find that out is talk to somebody who's been there and still there. Maybe somebody who's been married 20, 30, 40 years. Because they don't share some things with you that a person that's been married for two years just don't know yet. They ain't figured it out yet. Yeah. It could be somebody who's been married 10, 12 years that they haven't figured it out yet. And see, to be married, let me, let me tell you this, gentlemen. You're going to have to have thick skin and a whole lot of patience. Because as a man, you're going to have to go out there and you're going to earn your living. You're going to have to do the things that you need to do in order to be able to provide for your household. But things always aren't going to be bright in your own household. There's going to be times when you're unhappy. There's going to be times when she's unhappy. Hell, there might even be times when you're both unhappy together. But you're supposed to learn how to work your way through those things, right? Again, you got to ask yourself, are you an interesting person? And most of all, key fact that the guys don't understand. Do you know how to listen? Hey. Do you know how to listen? Because if you pay attention to your woman, you're going to learn her really fast, especially if she's consistent. Y'all understand? Mm -hmm. See, so we have to learn how to listen and then know how to respond appropriately. See, those things that we need in order to be able to be successful and even first attracting the mate, like when you're out on a date, we shouldn't be so eager to talk about ourselves, <laughs> you know, like trying to build self up. We got to learn if we can even hold a, a good, intimate conversation. Right. Sure. And then learn to listen, because see, here's the thing. If we pay attention, she might tell you things. And then later on, you've remembered some of the things that she's sharing with you that will help you in further conversations. For example, she said her favorite color was purple, right? And one day you went walking and you saw, uh, maybe you were out by yourself, and you saw something that was purple and it was beautiful and you thought she might like it. Now, I'm not saying leave with your wallet by any means at all, but what I am saying is later on in that relationship, you see something and it's purple and you think she's going to like it and you go ahead and purchase that item, right? Regardless of whatever, it might be a purple ring, purple death, whatever. And then you present it to her. Now she's going to know you've been listening to her. Right. That's you all. see what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you asked her later on when she's already told you that her favorite color was purple, then she's going to know you wasn't really paying too much attention, especially if you can't remember. Like I said, women will test you. All the time for years on down the line. <laughs> and if you haven't learned that yet as a young man, I promise you, you will learn. Now, you had one of y'all had a question. Did you have another question or something before we get into this? Because I want to yeah, talk uh, about some things, but I want to make sure that if you have some questions that we talk about them. Dealing with um, what you was talking about, the double standard. Turn your mic on that. Dealing with what you was talking about with the, um, the double standard. Do you believe that women just deem that as unmasculine? It's because when it comes to uh, insecurities. Because we know that when it comes to women, 
the reason why they really do a lot of the things they do, such as makeup, hair, and things. Because they're they, insecure. They're insecure. Right. So if they see that a man does anything of that nature, in their mind, do you think the reason why they have this double standard, because they know that that's, to them, a form of insecurity and that's a, a sign of weakness or masculinity? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes a woman, and that's the reason a, a, a woman will continually test a man to see what he's really made out of and what they can actually get away with. Well, not, in a lot of cases, it's just to see how much they can actually get away with. Again, not in all cases, but you got to keep in mind, women lead with their emotions. They, you know... Their emotions will take them all over the place. Again, that's why you see the Pookies and the Ray Rays being so daggone successful Absolutely. in relationships, regardless of how they treat the woman. See, I told y'all a while back ago, women love emotional variety. That's right. Because with emotional variety, they're not going to be bored. If you're just a regular guy, and you're not taking them on this roller coaster ride or whatnot. Just a regular. You go, you're gonna be boring. Right. You're gonna be boring to them. And again, like we talked about this before, in a relationship, who gets bored first? And who gets bored the most? <laughs> I got a follow up question dealing with uh, masculinity. Do you believe that? Pertaining to Genesis three and sixteen, do you think that that, that that's embedded? in a woman's uh, nature to be attracted to a man that, that puts himself first as a form of him showing value. Because I notice a lot of times that when women get with a guy that she has up under her or his nose open, in other words, she doesn't deem him. She right. gonna lose respect for that man a exactly. lot quicker. But you the see? man that practices Gen Genesis three and sixteen, she might see him as a higher pick. Listen to what I'm saying. First of all, Genesis third chapter sixteen verse that was the Almighty speaking specifically to the woman. But in regard to what you were saying, anytime. A man puts a woman before himself. That woman is going to see that as a weakness. A uh, woman will be more attracted to you when you don't pay them that much more attention. See, because a woman loves attention, and especially today with social media and, and all these social platforms. If a woman likes you and you're not paying her any attention, then she's going to have a problem with that. She's going to do everything she can to get your attention. But see, you have to make sure your focus is on you. And a lot of guys make the mistake, and I've said this for a very long time, and I've been guilty of making this mistake myself. When you're really into someone and you make it known to them, it's going to count against you. Y'all hear what I'm saying? It's always when a woman finds you harder to get. It's like if she got a bunch of guys flocking over her. But she says she likes you, but you're not flocking over her. Oh, that's going to be a problem for her. She's going to wonder what the heck is going on. How come you're not doing the same thing? <laughs> right. You know, so you're right. A man should be on his purpose first. First. Right. When you put a woman first and foremost be, uh, uh, before anything, you've made a, a very bad mistake. And any woman who's going to be honest with you will tell you that's the truth. But a lot of women, you know, we talk about double standards and a lot of women that just don't want certain things to be put out. As simple as that. As simple as that. We have to ask guys, though, because a lot of guys go into relationships dealing with foolery. We ain't going to just put all the foolery on women. A lot of guys go into relationship with foolery. A lot of guys may not be interested in a relationship. They may be more interested in what young folks call today a situation ship. Right. You see what I'm saying? And so in a lot of cases, they know the woman, that that's not what she's actually looking for. 
they might act like they're looking for a relationship to lead the woman on. And if their game is right, it's going to work for a while, sure. which is not going to turn out very well because they're liable to have this woman that they uh, say that they really like. But see, they also have what you call a side chick. Right? Now, the side chick already know that he's dealing with somebody because he not already let her know, right? He not already let the so-called side chick know that he's dealing with somebody. But the side chick thing is to be that number one. But say he loved this woman that he ain't really trying to marry though, right? Say he loved her. He ain't really trying to marry. He ain't, he ain't trying to mess that up, but he ain't trying to marry her either. The side chick going to end up being a problem because she wants to be number one, but she don't realize she's always going to be a side chick because she ain't marriage material. And the guy didn't already realize she just signed up to be his fun girl. And see, a lot of times people don't realize they plan themselves when they do that. Women don't realize they're devaluing their self. That's right. And she's allowing the guy to do that. So see, a lot of times people don't understand what they're doing and they're messing their own situation up. Side chick will never be a wife. Y'all understand that? And if she does become a wife, she's not going to be a very good wife because she was always used to being deceitful in the first place. Make sense to you, King? Okay. Make sense to you? Yeah. Why would you marry a side chick? Say, if you got a woman here that you love, and say you're just not right, but you, you're not ready for marriage. Right. But you're not ready to settle down with one woman either. So you have what you call a side chick. Side chick, you might even tell the side chick you're going to leave this one to be with her. Especially when the side chick start to acting like she want to fall off then. Right? right? So that's just a man manipulating two women. Which is a problem. He's not looking for marriage and yet he's got two women playing the part of his whore. And I'm just going to keep it real. I know a lot of people don't like to use that word but Hell, I done seen a lot of women, a lot of women on the internet using that word and say they'd rather be a whore than marry a man. Yeah, pretty much. Black women and white women. Imagine that. You said that you would rather devalue yourself by playing the role of a whore than to have more value and say that you're with somebody in a committed relationship to where it's the both of you that's building that relationship up. Hmm? It only makes sense to me. Check this out, y'all. When you deal with a woman, say you, you find yourself in a relationship and eventually, say early on in the relationship, where you, you're courting this woman. And then she makes this statement. Say like day one, day two. And she makes this statement. She need a man that can handle her. Because these men just can't handle me. Is that somebody you really want to consider being with? Think about what I'm saying right here. Because I'm going to give you some insight on what a woman is sharing with you when she says that she needs a man that can handle her. I can tell you right off the top, you better leave that woman alone. She's throwing the red flag right at you. Why should a man have to handle a woman? She's letting you know she's going to be combative. She's letting you know she's going to be a handful. So when a woman tells you she needs a man that can handle her, that woman's not going to be an asset. She's definitely going to be a liability. Okay. She might be fine and she might give, take you around the world when y'all laying down, so to speak. <laughs> but that's going to be the end of it. 
that's the that's gonna be the end of it. See, a lot of guys get get hooked on that on that around the world type situation that they have. Because she gonna throw it down, she gonna throw it at you. <laughs> but she gonna give your ass grief. A man should never have to handle a woman. Wait a minute, you so immature? You're not a grown adult that a man needs to handle you? Do y'all understand what I'm saying? So a woman like that, and she might be fine. Or what man's eyes deem to be fine. You see what I'm saying? She might have that big backside and all these old different things. You see what I'm saying? Might be cute. But when she utter it by her mouth, because she already knows she looks nice, and she already knows what she's working with, so to speak, but she ain't going to be what you want. If she got to run you through it every day, is it worth it? If she's going to be a liability and not an asset to you, what if you have a child or children with this woman? Hmm? She already warned you off the top. We just didn't take heed to the warning. Well, she said, you can't handle me. You can't handle me. Avoid that woman at all costs. You should never, ever have to handle a woman. Your woman is supposed to represent you. Right? Yes, indeed. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> now, let me say something else. A lot of guys, like I said, are walking away from marriage and I'd have to say justifiably so because a, a lot of women, again, not all women, but a lot of women have their double standard and they just don't want to be right. They don't want a man to lead them. They don't want to have to be accountable to a man. And a lot of women, check this out, because here go the kicker. They want the marriage, or should I say they want the wedding, but they don't want the marriage. I'm going to make mm. sense to you. Mm. Listen, and here's a clear indicator of that. When they're telling you, as they tell a lot of these guys, they want a nice expensive ring. Just any ring won't do. Because keep in mind, they're in competition with their so-called girlfriends. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of girls, today, and ask some people, they'll tell you, just, just ask. Just ask about other women. They want the wedding, but they don't want the marriage. Mm -hmm. And they don't want some cheap ring. See, remember the status quo that they, they've got out there, the 666? Y'all know what that is, right? They used to say 666 was the mark of the beast, right? <laughs> but only if you're looking at that woman as being the beast now. You got to be six foot tall with a six pack making six figures. That's what that 666 is. <laughs> and so you, you got to produce a, a very expensive ring. Six feet tall, six pack, and six figures. Yeah. Yeah, you ain't heard that before? I feel like I have. That's been out there for a long time. So what would be theirs in reverse? What they got to have now? Got to nothing, gotta... according to them. <laughs> nothing. Just them, huh? Nothing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Look, that's the reason I say a man has to. If a man is looking to be married and he really wants a wife, and this wife being the helpmate, and I, I brought it up. Uh, this up before uh, talking to guys saying how a lot of times a woman will be talking to other women talking about yeah girl I got him trained and all these different things well let's keep this real real quick here if a man is marrying a woman and she's to be his helpmate then in actuality this man should train her in the ways that of the things that he needs her to be able to do Ah. So he has to school her. He has to teach her the things that he desires. Her desire should be, 
how can I please my husband? Exactly. That should be her desire. Now, that comes from the Almighty. Oh, yeah. So if you have a submissive woman, see, a submissive woman who's committed to you, that's a woman that you give everything to, especially if you're out of resources. Right. Because if she's wholly committed to you, in other words, y'all remember the definition of loyal, right? Yes. If she is that, right, and she's submissive to you, and she's always trying to figure out ways to please you, I'm sure that woman, you wouldn't mind giving her any and everything that she desired if you could afford to give it to her. Yeah. I got a question, oh, uh, what you was talking about. Keep it on topic, though. Go ahead. Because uh, you were saying that these women, when it comes to them finding what they want to find, things of that nature. Some women. I don't know. Go ahead. If if a man decides to forego that because of the, all of these different standards, would you deem he'll... To forego what? Uh, pursuing a wife. Okay, go ahead. Would you deem, would you deem that man being, uh, I guess, defiling or being negligent or anything that's derogatory because this is the environment that's out here? Or do you think that he should still keep on pushing, 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 pushing to try to find something in a pile of this? Every man don't have to get married. But like I said, every man is not marriage mature, but every man don't have to be married. But he, uh, again, that comes with some things, though. You definitely don't want to go out turning these women into your personal whore. You see what I'm saying? Because that would be a violation of the Almighty. Now, a, a, a man could be to himself and say if he wants certain things done, like if he wants home-cooked meals or if he wants laundry done or whatever it is, and and uh, say he, his his time is taken because he's working a lot trying to build up his his resources or whatnot, he can always outsource those things, you see. He can always outsource somebody coming in and clean up his house, coming in and prepare his meals, coming in and doing other things. He can outsource that. He would not be out of order. You see, so you got some women who trying to be like on the Cardi B wagon, talking about they don't cook and they don't clean and they got this ring, this, that, and the other. Nowadays, when you listen to women on social media, they'll tell you they're not doing all of this stuff because they'll say, I'm not his mother. Mm. I'm not raising, I'm not doing this for no man. They will say that out of their mouth. Sure. Then they're disqualifying themselves. And they don't understand that. Because I guess they believe that all men are just desperate. Because I know some men lead what they want. And that's the worst thing they can do. Enter into a relationship. Now some of them, they ball and they got some money. But that's still wrong because they're making it hard for those who don't have a lot of money. Because now you're setting a standard. To where a woman thinks that a man is supposed to do everything. You know, you're going to take them out on every date that you go on and every date that you're going to pay. You know, and then when they get married, should a man marry the woman? She's looking for that man to make sure that she has this someone, not all, this lavish lifestyle. You see what I'm saying? Right. So, But a man can only do according to what his resources are. But what his resources will allow him to do. Now, you might have a man up here to say, say he's making, I believe there's 10% of men in this country, 10% just making 100 k The average salary in this in this country is forty forty two thousand mm. dollars Some people make less than that. Some people make more than that. You see what I'm saying? So, let me ask you a question, right? Say you met a, a woman. Just be honest, because I know the type of advice that a woman would give to their son. Say if you met a woman, and say you came from, a, and, I, and I want you to think about this very carefully. Say if a man, not necessarily if a man came from a single parent household, that parent being mom, right? Mom was a single parent. She raised you, did a good job. But then you were looking for a relationship. And you you found out that a woman that you had been seeing that you really was feeling, 
she never told you and you never asked, but eventually it came up to say she had two or three children. And say y'all never had the conversation, but she necessarily didn't even want any more children. But she was interested in you and you don't have any children whatsoever. But you was also seeing or you was also seeing a, another woman who didn't have no children. Right? And you you liked her a whole lot too. And she was really into you. Now you gotta warn this. Got a couple, two, three children. They're both about the same age. This one don't want no more children. This one don't have no children. She's into you. Say if it's not you. Say that you have a son and he's torn. He don't know which one to pick. Because he really feeling both of them. What advice would you give your son on which one he should choose? You got to pick Regardless of the situation, you got to pick the, the woman that don't have no children. And why? Because you'll never come first. Hmm? You'll never well, not come only first, you'll never you'll come, come first, her. not only will you not come first, this one did not really say she don't want no more children. And you don't have no children. Your son don't have no children. That means he don't get a legacy. <laughs> he don't get to have no children. You see what I'm saying? So here's one thing that'll that'll happen. And I want you to think about what I'm getting ready to say here. A lot of times a woman will say, not all women, but some women will say, wait a minute, what's wrong with me? In other words, what's wrong with her and you picking her? You came from a mother who was a single mother, so she's a single mother too, and you can't pick her? So what's your problem that you came from a single mother? Does that mean you have to keep perpetuating that cycle? Exactly. Huh? <laughs> Do that mean because this person made a mistake and you made a mistake or however it turned out that we got to keep on doing that? Do that mean that you shouldn't get a chance to start your own seed? Right. You see what I mean? So you want to always give the best advice because see, like I say, a lot of times people like to play the victim. And see, that takes them away from having to have accountability uh, for the mistakes or the mishaps that they had. Like having babies out of wedlock and not being married. Now, that's not in every single case because it could be some cases where a woman got divorced and guess what? She took the children. Now, you with that same woman that you, you didn't got with later on, what make you think she won't do the same thing to you? Hmm? Gee, now I already showed you an example. Right? right? And in most cases, guys, let's keep it real. Because most guys don't keep it real anyway. When a woman tells you about a situation that she's been in, nine times out of ten, literally nine times out of ten, she's going to be the victim in that story that she tells you a lot. Am I right or wrong? She's going to always be the victim, and it was always the guy that was the oppressor. And just about every case that I've ever been told, you ever been in any well, situation? Especially, especially if she's trying to impress that man. Yeah. Every, sing, every single women, time. Women, women, uh, and it's not to shed any bad light to our good sisters out there because it's good sisters out exactly. there. Exactly. Well. They're definitely good women. But a lot of, a lot of, uh, in my experiences that I've experienced, most cases, there's a lot of deceit uh, in the beginning stages if a woman is interested in you. Sometimes in a man, too. Mm -hmm. You know, a man, I have a whole bunch of situations going on. He, he mm -hmm. won't speak it, you know. But. Mm -hmm. And guys are, are completely out of order in a lot of cases yeah. because they'll go in knowing they're not trying to be right with this woman. Going into a situation where they will establish a, re a relationship knowing that they're not going to be committed to that relationship. And see, the way you can tell if somebody is really into you or not, here's how you can tell if a person wants a relationship or they don't want a relationship. And this can work for men and women. Mm. If a person is inconsistent, 
with you. You see what I'm saying? Because if a person really into you, they're going to make time for you. They're going to make time for you. But if they're just constantly inconsistent with you, that's letting you know that most likely they're probably dealing with somebody else or they're not really into you like you're into them. Right? Check this out. Another way, they don't make time for you. Right. If you call them somebody they really into you, oh, they're going to make some time for you. They're going to make some time for you because they feeling you. They're going to move all that around. You see what I'm saying? They're going to move their schedule. <laughs> they're going to be glad to hear from you. <laughs> but if somebody already got something going, you see what I'm saying? They don't, they don't make time for you. Ladies, if you're into this guy and you only get to see him like, after hours like 1 a.m., 2 a.m., <laughs> when you got to get up at 5 or 6 to go to work, but he called you and said, hey, what you doing? But then he know you're sleeping. You're supposed to get up and go to work. I'm uh, just thinking, I, 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 uh, what, what's that phrase they use? I, I pull up. Yeah, I'm just thinking, I, I pull up. <laughs> pull up. <laughs> See, you can't take a relationship like this. You see, like I said, I want to get a women game. And I want to get a man some game. In other words, it shouldn't even really be a game. Yeah. Just some, some, some tidbits of truth. See, we have a lot of people that's just being deceptive. But let's get back to this ring thing for, for a second here. Say like if a, if a guy is thinking that this woman really likes him and she's really big on the fact that she has to have an expensive ring. She just won't take the ring that you pick out for. She ain't trying to get your grandmother's ring that was left to you so when you get married or something, right? She don't want none of that, but she didn't saw this ring and this ring is say like three, four carats. I say this ring is, it's a $20,000 ring, uh, a $25,000 ring. And she's saying that's the ring she has to have. Do you marry this woman? Yes or no? No. You tell that woman to get the hell up out of there real quick, fast, and in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Because it ain't about you at that point. Right. You see what I'm saying? It's about her and her girlfriends. You see what I'm saying? And she's got somebody behind her saying, girl, you got to have this. Girl, you got to have it. That's why I say they want the wedding. But they don't want to marry. Am I making sense to y'all? No, you're right. I think Speak that. on it. Am I making sense to you? I Tell me that. what's wrong with that scenario. Just that part right there. She's not willing to take the ring. Because see, here's the thing. If she's really into you, she'll live in a tent with you. You ain't got to have a big house or something. That's you see what I'm saying? If she's really into you, she'll take a cigar band. If she's really into you. But if she's making a big deal that she's got to have this like this very expensive ring, she's like she trying to take you for what she can get. She's looking at you like you're a simp, a right. sucker. Now, now, this is not all women. And see, here's the thing. Also in these relationships, early on, early on, if you're considering marriage, one of the most important things you're going to have to find out and be certain about it is if she's willing to not only take a man's lead, but to take your lead. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. See, a lot of guys, they don't get things established before they get married. And then when they get married, they just assume Things are going to work out the way that he wants them to work out. And then, uh-oh, it don't never turn out like that. Right. It don't never turn. You guys are kind of quiet today. No, nah, right. It's the truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be honest with you, like you said, at the end of the day, she has to like you more. It just ain't no other sense to bust about it. Yeah. It's so crazy that, you know, that you said that with the whole ring and the money thing and things like that. But the women follow their pockets. I, I paid attention to the women that really like the guy. They spend more money on the man than they sell. The ones that really like, <laughs> not real talk. Like, it's even though I don't go with the New Testament at all, but it's a scripture in there that says that the heart follows the treasures. 
There are, in fact, a lot of women, and in some cases men, who marry for what they believe that they will be able to get out of that marriage in a monetarily type way. That's right. Mm. There are men and women that will marry for what they believe you can do for them That's or right. give them or the position that they will be in. Even if that position is just a social status. That's right. That's, what it's, that's why I look at it like this. You know I mean, this is a personal opinion, but what you think about it, like if we have, well, if we in a relationship and you got both parties bringing their income, why should the man not control the income? Well, <laughs> you ain't gonna never be married, dude. No, because it's gonna it's gonna dip it in the bud. Is she with you or not? No, because it's like this. It's listen, like, listen, <laughs> listen to me. Let me, me let, like listen to me. Are you traditional or are you modern? Answer that question. For I'm, me. I'm, I'm. Answer no. Traditional. You're tra okay, you're traditional. Yep. So being a traditional man, if you, in fact, you are traditional, you know that you're going to take on the bigger responsibility Absolutely. in that in, in that marriage, right? In that relationship, uh, I, I wholeheartedly believe that a man should be responsible for paying the rent or the mortgage, whichever he has. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? I do believe that the man's responsibility is to take care of the the food and the clothing and things. Now, there's some uh, situations where it, it, it works if a woman can help provide for food. And a lot of times, the woman might not necessarily want the clothing that you're going to buy because, again, people's finances are different. And see, I'm, I'm, I'm old school. And I believe if you get something nice, this, that, and the other, and it fits and it looks good, but you have to consider women are different than men when it comes to the way they like to dress. Not saying that men are bums or sloppy when they want to dress, but you have certain people who just like designer this and designer that. And I have to say this while I'm saying that. We some of the poorest people on the planet, but we spend money like we're wealthy. Right. You see, the rich people, they keep their money. By not, they, they can have a, uh, people know they're wealthy, so they can have a, a fake Louis bag and a fake this and nobody else pays attention to it because they feel like it's real anyway. So they're very wise to save their money. But the poor people, they go out and spend like, say, a uh, 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 $1,700, $2,000 for a purse and got $26 in the purse. You see what I'm saying? They go out and buy the big designer clothes and the nice shoes and everything. So you can't get rich if you if you're one of the biggest purchasers. Black folks, we spend more money as consumers than anybody else. That's right. But we're the poorest. You see what I'm saying? Now uh, back to what you were saying. You think that a man should control all the money? Well, let me tell you how it might be a benefit to you not to. Say if a woman is working, hopefully she's working for the betterment of her household, right? right. But say if she's making some money. It's, let's say she's making good money. Right. If she already has expensive taste, now that's saving you money because with the money she's making, she can go buy her own expensive handbags, her own expensive designer, this, that, and the other. You can still help out by buying other things. You see what I'm saying? But your resources don't have to go for that. And then if she's still able to make contributions to the house based on the money that she's making, then I still think that if you're a traditional man, you're going to pay the major bills. She could take care of things like the internet bill, if you got an alarm on the house to pay for that, you know, things like that. But then her big thing should be that she's still pouring into the relationship, such as nurturing that relationship, being kind in that relationship, not taking your kindness for a weakness in that relationship. You see what I'm saying? She's showing value by doing certain things. Even if she's working, like I say, if she can work from home or working to help provide for the home, that's always going to be a benefit. Because in today's economy, it really does take at least two people to help maintain a household. 
You see what I'm saying? And that, that, that's what's my uh, main thing was like if if she brings in, say she brings in roughly forty thousand dollars a year, and you bring in maybe sixty. Okay. I got y'all got a hundred thousand dollars coming in the house. Now, in the mindset of a lot of women, they think that out of her forty thousand, twenty thousand is hers, or not even that. Some of them say the whole forty thousand might be hers. Out of who's forty thousand? Out of her money, she okay. bringing in the forty thousand. Okay. So, like, what I'm saying is, is that if she has forty thousand, that could be also brought to this household. I have sixty thousand, right? I feel that. Me being as the man, and I tell any female, I, I'm like, if you with a man that you can't trust to manage your money properly, you should marry that type of man. Let me say this right here. You sound like you're a modern man. I'm saying... Listen, listen to what I'm saying, and this ain't no insult. You're sounding like you're more modern, a modern mindset, not a traditional mindset. Now, a, a, a modern woman, a modern mindset woman... We'll say, okay, we do 50-50 on all this. We do 50-50 on the, on the rent. We do 50-50 on the gas electric. We do this, that. And that's all good if they have that understanding. But uh, the, the, here's where the, the, the dilemma lies. When you have a modern mindset woman who wants a traditional man, even in the way of being a boyfriend. Now, if a boyfriend is paying her bills, he's a simp. He's a sucker. I tell him that to his face. Do you see what I'm saying? A modern, if a woman is has a modern mindset, meaning, hey, if you hungry, you know how to cook. Get in the kitchen and cook your own food. Why should I have to do your laundry? I'm not married to you. I'm not your mother. See, a lot of women have that mindset. Not all, but a lot of women have that mindset. So you got to meet a person where they're at. And if you already know where they're at and what their mindset is, if you choose to marry them expecting something different, then shame on you. Right. You see what I'm saying? So like I say, you get some women who will say, I ain't doing 50-50. But those are modern mindset women who want a traditional man and they think their value is just their beauty. That's what I'm asking, though. Uh, that's right. not a that's not a woman that a guy should be married. What is her 50, other 50 going to? It should be 100, 100 to this house. You're not understanding if you're a traditional man, you're going to take the bigger role, no. and you're going. You, that's going. Matter of fact, you're going to most likely insist on taking that role. If you're a traditional, see, that's true. Th that, that's that's that, that's a traditional man. That's the reason I said I wasn't trying to be insulting or anything when I said you're sounding like you're a man that's really of a modern mindset. He kind of mixing the two, I think. Yeah, he, but you he, he you can't you you yeah, can't mix. I get where you coming from, though. I definitely. Yeah, you can't you can't mix the two. So you'd be better off, say, like if you were of that modern mindset, right? That way, now you got a woman. Y'all gonna go in fifty fifty. She going she gonna go out and she gonna get her a job so she can pay half her bills. That's or half y'all's bills. That's what I'm. But the thing is, it's not that she's paying half. She's contributing all of her. All, see, fifty fifty is that. She got a hundred thousand, I got a hundred thousand, she paying fifty percent, and I'm paying fifty to the house. That's what I'm saying, fifty fifty. No, I got a hundred thousand, you got a hundred thousand, now we got two hundred thousand. Now if you if if you decide to say like, hey, I want to buy a purse, well let's sit down and take this out of the whole two hundred thousand to buy your purse. Or I could say no, we should put this money into something that's going to be an asset for us instead of buying these liabilities. Because what I'm seeing, like a lot of modern women and modern men, is that they are roommates and not partners or not one flesh or one body. So when you got are you talking about a marriage or you talking about girlfriend boyfriend? No, I'm talking about marriage okay, because. People. People. A lot of modern marriages, I'm saying today that they're just roommates. They have their money. They have their money. Then they have a, a, a share of what they deem should be shared as bills. But the thing that I'm saying as one flesh is that both incomes come as one. And the man decides like, hey, we have $200,000. Let us 
take this money and say, okay, a percentage goes into the bills, a percentage goes into investments, and then a small percentage can go into luxury. And we added this small percentage, we can buy the purse, we can buy the whatever, but we have to bring our income because we can actually attribute more than you say, this is my 50000 I'm going to pay my little share of the bills, but I'm going to keep my 50000 Here's where you're going to run into the problem. <clears throat> if you have a woman that's working, keep in mind you're dealing with a woman. Women run on their emotions, okay? If you have a woman and she's working and she's bringing a substantial amount of money and she can't go out and buy a purse that she wants, if she can't go out and buy some shoes that she wants without asking permission from you and she works, hold on. You're putting her in a position to where she's feeling like she don't have any say whatsoever and she's working, but she's not working for for. To, so she can uh, actively participate and help paying some of the prospective bills that you have. But now she has to get permission from you. What if she needs some tampons or she needs this or she needs her other feminine products? A woman should not have to come to you and say, hey, look, I need to go get these products. I need to do this and get permission from her husband to go do that. That you you scared you are scaring a woman away. I'm telling you. So there has to be some leeway, and I understand you was talking about like a purse or this, that, and the other. You see what I'm saying? That will be taking a burden off. As long as she's able to make contributions to the house, if you're a traditional mindset, it's your responsibility to make sure that that house keeps moving in the direction that it should be going. It's simple as that. Right. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. You see what I'm saying? If she's taking care of the responsibilities that you want her to take care of, right? That means she's still pouring into that relationship with the things that you want her to pour in. But for you to have control over her money, say, what if something happens to where you just take her money and she, and say, say if the guy ain't right. And the guy decides he got enough money. He's leaving her because he had a side chick and the side chick duped him. You know, you ain't never supposed to fall for the side chick anyway. But say something like that happens. Then she's ass out because she don't have anything because you had control over all the money that she made. And that's the point that I'm trying to say is that. You you, you, you would, what I'm saying here? Well, you, you, now, what, hold on, hold on. What if that woman that he's with is your daughter? Absolutely. And that's Hold on, listen to me. So your daughter is in a relationship with a man who's controlling all the money it. and he has she has to ask if she can go buy her it. products and this that and you would love that? I would love it. You know why? Because I'll be the pick the righteous man to take on that, that role as the head of that house. And you would have picked the man. Yes. So you're gonna pick the man for your daughter. And Absolutely. you know and you know that. See, I'm saying that with my daughter right now. But I don't even know if I'm going to be alive during that particular time. I can't predict something that hasn't happened yet. Well, what I'm saying is that you got good people and bad people, period. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to the role of the man, how can he not control his house by deviating out where income should go? His household. Listen. You got you got to get in on this right here because I need to see where your mind is at. Speak on it because I want to see where your mind is at too. Because see, let me let me tell y'all something. I love my children. I love my daughter, and I want my daughter to be in a traditional uh, a marriage, right? But I don't want no man to control every aspect of any dollar that she's made and he's controlling it. Mm -hmm. I don't want my daughter to have to ask, hey, I need some money so I can go get some, uh, some, some, uh, 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 some things that she needs, some personal items or whatever. No, I would never put my daughter in a humiliating position like that to have to go to a man, her husband, because see, here's the thing. He's going to have a lot of amount of money to where he's not going to always say something to her when he get ready to go buy something because he's the head of that house. He's not going to feel like, hey, man, shit, he's going to feel like, I work, I make money. If I need this, I want this, I'm going to buy this. I've never asked my wife for permission when I go out and buy a motorcycle, and, uh, when I go out and buy a Jeep. I don't ask my wife nothing. When I get ready to go out and buy something, I go out and buy because I want it. I don't want my wife to feel like she's a slave to me, and you wouldn't want your daughter to feel like she's a slave to any man, to where she don't have enough money. If she's working, let's say if you say she made $100,000, and he has control over all that money, 
I'm not going to recommend that for any woman. I'm not going to recommend that for any woman. And let me tell you this right here. Especially if a woman have a child, she should always have what an old lady might call some back money. So even when she says she's broke, she got some money put away for that rainy day because she has a child to take care of anyway or children. Should something happen to that man and say he's got the money in, in a way to where she don't even have any access to oh, that money. Said. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying because you never can tell because every man is going to set up his house the way he wants to set it up, right. especially with a situation like that. You wouldn't want that your your daughter, if she was in that situation, to have to come to, to, to you as the father say, hey, look, I need some help right now. And that helps need to be financially because I don't know where he's at or what he did, but he was controlling all the money. But your daughter, she was the CEO of a company or whatever. Right. You see, You see what I'm saying? I wouldn't want that for my own daughter. I do understand that a man who has a traditional mindset is going to be the, he's going to be the primary caregiver of responsibilities for, as far as bills, should I say. Right. He's going to be the, the one who, my wife ain't never had to pay a mortgage since she built, she ain't never had to pay a mortgage. Now she's paid some side bills and things like that, even help with groceries and whatnot. But I'm not going to put those major bills on my wife. What kind of man would I be? But they even tell my wife, hey, look here, we're married. I'm traditional, but you got to pay me 50% on this on this mortgage here. No, it's not. See, that's what I'm saying. I think you miss screwing what I'm trying no, to No, not just the mortgage. I understood that. Because it's, it, it's not that anybody is paying 100%. Because say if I was a man and I don't want my wife to work at all. Okay. That's more traditional than anything. I, ideally, that's what I wanted from my wife. My wife, she got but, bored being at home, and then she knew instead of asking me for X amount of dollars to go buy a purse, this, that, and the other, she wanted to have her own money so that she didn't have to ask me to go now, buy those other things because she know that I'm supposed to be taking care of those primary bills anyway, like a cable bill or, or the alarm bill or something like that. Yeah, you, you go ahead and you take that. Say if I'm a man that's bringing 100% of the income to the house. Mm hmm she has to ask me for money anyway. But now I'm bringing 100% of the house. A person would not find no problem in that. Let me ask you a question. Think about what I'm getting ready to ask you. Put yourself in a woman's position for just one second. And how would it feel that every time you wanted something, you have to ask your husband for some money in order to do that. And as the husband, especially if she like nice things, because you like nice things or whatever, and every time she asks for something, it's going to be some time when you might feel the way like, damn, she keep, she, well, she just spending too much, even if it's not a lot, but she's coming to you often for money. I want you to think about how she would feel having to come to you every time she needed anything, any finances, she came to you. That's not going to make a person feel very well at all. But Even what? if she is your wife and your helpmate, you want your woman to feel comfortable with you. You don't want her to feel like, man, like, because then she's going to start feeling trapped. Even if she's working, if you control all the money, she's going to feel, she's going to feel the way. And we just got to keep it a buck with that. I can see your perspective on certain things, but I would not want my daughter in a situation like that. Just like when I would give an example, like if a mother sent her child being abused by other women, you see what I'm saying? Even though she might be an abuser, but when it comes to her child, she's not going to want to see that. She's going to say, leave that woman alone. Right. That woman ain't no good. I think in the black community, we haven't experienced the sight of that operation working in a righteous manner because I see other cultures operate in a successful manner in that way. The black community has always seen the pimp. The black community has always seen the dog. So it's always this fear of negativity when coming into a situation. But when it comes down to it, as a man in a masculine role, he has logic. He has reasoning. He doesn't operate on emotion. Some men. Well, that's what I'm saying. The Some righteous men. man. We we talking about the virtuous man. Or the you, virtuous you're talking about the man who deemed himself to be righteous or the man that the, the almighty one that's the almighty that's, that's righteous. The one that even that he falls seven times, he still gets up and try to keep doing the right thing. I'm saying that man sees 
things from a logical, not non emotional standpoint. And as a father, or even as my mother, my sister, or whatever female, I would want her to, I would put her in a situation with a man like that. Then with a man that she can control her own money. But I know majority of my black women that I have in my family, they do not do what's right with their money. Most black women don't. So, so why <laughs> wouldn't we put her in a situation with a man that's going to not only take the little money she would have squandered on something that's actually a pure liability, then give her an actual asset that would put her in a position that after I'm dead and gone, that she will still be able to benefit from the decisions I made with her money. I'm going to say this one more time. I want you to hear me. Hear exactly what I'm saying. And then we're going to cover some other things. But check this out. I do understand exactly what you're saying. Don't get me wrong. I do understand that. But again, a traditional man knows that his primary role is to take care of those, those, uh, a lot, the bigger portion of that household. You see what I'm saying? Now, ideally, ideally, he's taking care of mostly everything. Right. She's doing some other things that's going to be an asset to this man. She's going to, you give her a house, she's going to turn into a home. You see what I'm saying? You buy some food, she going to make you some meals. You give her your seed, she going to make you some babies. Or she going to have some babies there. You see what I'm saying? So she's going to play her role regardless if, in fact, she's a good woman. But now, if in today's society, and we know there's progression, right? A man still has his role to play. Now, we need a helpmate because sometimes we're going to fall short. Where we fall short, that's where our help may come in. If I need help doing this, uh, if you can do this thing better than me, I'm still making sure that my household is run, but I might not be able to cover everything because it might be so much. So I'm going to allegate some things to you that you can take care of. That's when I was saying earlier that a man is going to train his wife so she knows what she needs to be able to do in order to please him. See, we can't play like uh, a woman is a mind reader. And sometimes they'll pick up on your energy once they get familiar with you. They'll know certain things like you might like a certain soap that you bathe with, right? But you never go buy the soap. But you know when this soap is gone, you know, that, that same soap ain't been lasting all this time, but that soap is always replenished every time you need it. You see what I'm saying? Like it's, it's always there. She might know you like a particular type of oatmeal. But even though she go, go doing the shopping, even though if that oatmeal go out uh, faster than some of the other groceries, boom, you never know it because, boom, every time you go to get that oatmeal, it's there. You see what I'm saying? So a good woman, she's going to know those things because if we pay attention to one another, that woman is going to know where, where, where she needs to fill in the blanks, so to speak. Right. She's going to play her role if she's a good woman as that helpmate. Those things are already going to be in place, but she shouldn't have to come to you to go do. See, like with some of her, with her money, she's going to do those other things. You ain't even got to ask. You see what I'm saying? She might like this brand of toothpaste, but you like that brand of toothpaste. But your toothpaste never run out, and you ain't never going to buy no toothpaste. Well, how is it not running out? And you ain't never want to got because she's taking care of those things. Right. You see what I'm saying? So a good woman is going to look well to the goings of her house anyway. That's why I say every woman is not a good woman. And every woman has not been taught how to be a wife. That's right. You see what I'm saying? And so we need women. You, 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 you see right what I'm saying? Good. Every good woman right haven't been taught those skills that they need to have. But see, we 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 like to be a private type of people. We think we can do everything on our own without going to some wise elders. See, every elder is not a wise elder, but go to a wise elder, a wise elderly couple who's who's been down that road and they got 30, 40, 50, 60 years in. And they gonna tell you, it wasn't a smooth road. Right. They gonna tell you there have been times when both of them were unhappy. Right. But they understand that this person that they're with can't make them happy. They can add to their happiness. Right. You see what I'm saying? 
But we have to learn how to move as one. But when you make a person feel and not intentionally make them feel like, mm, like they can't come to you, they're going to start to take uh, and hold hostility and resentment because especially if they're making money, but they can't do the things that they want to do with them. But some of that money anyway, they can't do the things that they want to do so that they can feel good about themselves. But yet they're going out working, busting their butt, then still coming home playing the role of a wife, preparing meals and doing this and doing the laundry and all these other things. Now we putting a big load on them, man. We that's, can't just that's do what that. I'm saying though, uh, Murray. It's like even if as a man we go out and we work hard. I know you go out work. But say if somebody come in, at, in their house at 2 o'clock in the morning, you worked hard all day, but you got to still go down and take that bullet. Because uh, I'm going to willfully do that. <laughs> that, that, that Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said you got to go down and take I'm the not bullet. Gonna, I'm not going to necessarily take the bullet, but if I hear something, see, I'm the type of man, I got about four flashlights on the side of my bed, <laughs> right, right there. I get up in the middle of the night and I got a little flashlight. I put, might put that bad boy on dim. And I either go to the bathroom. There was a time when I walked around the house even more frequently with this flashlight because I'm a guard in my house. I, right, right. I, I know how to set up a house to where, like, you might have mirrors in certain angles of your house. So if you're gone and you come in, you can search, say, like your bathroom without walking all the way in the bathroom. I'm the type of person I have an order about things like I have a shower curtain going all the way this way, right? So when you open up the door, you can see inside the shower versus somebody out in your house and they're hiding in the shower, but you got to pull back toward the door. See, there are certain things that as a man, I have put in place. You, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you don't necessarily have to make it uh, apparent to other people, but it's apparent to you. So you can tell if someone's been in your house or if someone's in your house. There are just certain things that I had to learn early. And I can teach those particular things as well. But when it comes to me, let me say me as a traditional man, I know the brunt of the responsibility it's on me as far as taking care of my household, the resources. You see what I'm saying? Now, a woman, she can add to that where I fall short. But that those primary things should come from me if I'm calling myself a traditional man. That's the reason most women today, even modern-minded women, want a traditional man even though they're not a traditional woman. That's the reason I ask that question. Should a woman with a modern mindset, do she deserve a traditional man? She deserves a modern man. There you go. <laughs> you there you go. Black, do you think in the black community we have mismanaged monies? We've mismanaged everything in the black community. And, and do you think that, like, say, for instance, if we take uh, inventory of how other nations operate and when they budget... I've noticed that a lot of the other nations via whites, Arabs, uh, Mexicans, everything of that nature, they put everything in the pot. Even if, even if you ain't, we ain't even, say if we married, but say if we got another family living with us, because you know how Mexicans get down, they beat up, had a whole mm -hmm. family, but all the money is going in the pot. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying in the black community is like it's so much individualism to where I have to see that I'm protecting and there's not enough trust. I understand your perspective completely. So I don't want you to think I don't understand what you're saying. I'm saying is it ideal in this time? I don't think so. I think if you want to have a productive relationship, you cannot make your wife feel like she's a slave. Do you see what I'm saying? And being a slave to her husband. Do you, you feel what I'm saying? See, that, it ain't that she's a slave. Don't speak on it. I, 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 I understand what you're saying. But you have to understand, women are emotional. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yum, 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 telling you. Yeah, right. You, 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 you talking on how things should be. He's saying how, how it really is right now. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's what I'm getting from it. Most men would like would would like that 
to to be over the money 100%, you know what I'm saying? And some women will out here will give you that. You know what I mean? You got to find a woman that is willing to do that type of cuz every woman not most for the most part ain't it's ain't a wrap. Nothing. You can forget about that. Like, you know what I'm saying? They going to want to have their own money, especially if they work too. They working for their money. Yeah. Look. And that's that's, that's what I'm saying though, bro, <laughs> is that that's ultimate skin in the game. I understand what you're See, saying. See, the thing is, I I done seen it over and over and over. Right. When you got your own money and this and that, you got one foot in, one foot out the door. You can bounce at the at, at a That's blink true, of a hat. That's true. But if I know that you putting all in, you all in. Yeah. yeah. I done seen too many females just bounce. Let me tell you this. You have not witnessed a lot of, check this out. You have not witnessed a lot of emotional maturity with males or females. I'm speaking of particularly black males and black females. Because when we come up seeing a bunch of irregularities, right, abnormalities, and we consider those things to be normal and they've never been normal, then those things become problematic for us. Because we cannot take something that's abnormal into a relationship and want to have a normal relationship using abnormalities. We can't do it. It's not going to work. So when I'm talking about emotional maturity, that means we've got to be a right people collectively, the male and the female. That means we've had, we, we would have had to grow and learn things the right way. But we've learned things the wrong way. You see what I'm saying? So once we recognize that something is wrong. Say like if if you with a woman. Say if you were a woman. I'm with a woman. Right? And we've all learned things. Women all men, We've learned things the wrong way. What if one of us. Or two of us. Start to learning a better way. That's going to be more beneficial. But the others have it. Right. Unless the two people that's involved in the same situation together, unless they come together and they want to start repairing and rebuilding that by doing things the right way, just because he learned it first don't mean that she's going to gravitate to it. She might still be of the same mindset. I might still be of the same bad mindset when my wife might come into the right mindset. So now what we do is we're causing conflict because we're not on the same page. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. So the, the goal is for us to be on the same page. That's right. But if we just going to be on two totally different pages, that that's going to lead to a separation. Because even the communication is going to take a hit. That's right. You see what I'm saying? So most women haven't been taught how to be a wife. Right, right. Most women haven't been taught how to be a helpmate. But guess what? Most men ain't been taught how to be a husband. That's a fact. That's right. So when we recognize that as a husband, I got to first learn how to do my part. Now, my part, say, check out, if I didn't know I was supposed to be the head of the house because I was taught that it's a partnership. A partnership mean I don't have the the uh, uh, the, the uh, I don't have even the majority of say so in the house that I'm supposed to be the head of according to the Almighty because a partnership man that's fifty fifty. So if you make a decision as a partnership, then your wife can say like, "Well, no, I disagree." So now y'all are the stalemate. That's right. So that's that's problematic. That's Do you right. see what I'm saying? That's right. So we just got to get to the point to where we take a little bit at a time and we build off of that. But when you're dealing with anybody, whether it's the male or the female, or even both of them, where they have, they're emotionally immature, then they haven't gotten to a point to where they're understanding it's going to be right, whether it be the male or the female. So, so what we got to do is we got to take these baby steps they keep trying to have pos what I call positive communication. Because if we can have positive communication, now we're putting ourselves on the right track to where we can possibly grow. 
But we got to be able to grow without arguments. Right? Because if there's an argument, that means somebody's in disagreement. Yep. And guess what? Anytime somebody's unhappy in a relationship, usually it's who? First. Who gets bored first? Amen. It's all exactly. Why do you think the Almighty made the man the head of the house? Huh? As a as a husband, not boyfriend, girlfriend type deal. He, he, he has logic. You see what I'm saying? And women are emotional. Again, that's why they make a lot of different mistakes. Having different baby fathers, this, that, and the other when they're young. Because they haven't matured emotionally. Mm. So I said they love emotional variety. They know with this guy, they're not going to be bored. Because there's always going to be some bull jumping off somewhere. Huh? <laughs> but if you're just going to work and you coming home and she ain't getting no excitement, you going to be bored even though you're the provider. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like That's why I was saying is that a lot of relationships the same that the, the skin or what's more to lose is the man. The man has mm -hmm. the most to lose. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So if a female is given 100% of her resources to the marriage, then that lets me know that you have something to lose as well. Well, let me tell you what. You tell me when you find that woman who's going to be willing to give up 100% of whatever she Because look, when I, was, when, I, when, I was, when, I was, when I had some females, right, I got, more, I got, no, I got more cooperation from females that gave me all her money than the ones that didn't give me you money. You sound like a pimp. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> but I'm just saying, but out of straight, pure cooperation, right? I mean, it was girls willingly like, I made this much here. You know what I mean? Like, willingly. And I'm like, at the end of the day, I'm looking back like, I got more benefits from a girl that was giving me all her money outside of her giving me money than the woman that I was doing all this stuff for her. Just remember effective communication, right? And making that woman feel like she's a part of that relationship, making her feel secure that she's going to have what she needs. Or not. Now, I can understand if the male and the female agree that that money is going to be put in a joint account. That's what I'm saying. Not just an account where his name is on there. Yeah, and then issues are discussed about how money gets spent. But however, when a woman leaves you, understand this. When a woman leaves a man emotionally, she just hasn't left physically yet. She's on her way out the door. So a lot of times, men aren't mind readers, and they don't know that this woman is getting ready to leave. So if it's in a joint account, then what's going to stop this woman from taking what she wants from that account and then leave <laughs> because it is, in fact, the go See, y'all are one for you got to listen to me. you, you got to listen to me because I'm, I'm going to put you on the game, man. Listen, I, I know women and I know men. So the best thing you can do is never put yourself in a situation where this woman feels like she just don't have a way out. And you never want to make that woman feel like she has to come to you for everything. Because whether you're a traditional man, we are still in what we call modern times. I will also say this, even when it comes to running a business, um, the person that starts the business is going to take the most risk always. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times... The man, like when you look in the book of Joshua, uh, when Joshua was giving away his daughter or uh, Caleb was giving away his daughter, he said, the man that go up and take this troop, he shall even take my daughter as a wife. Now, why did he do that? He did that because him him taking over that troop in a physical battle, let the father know that he's going to be able to protect that daughter. And not only that, he's going to be able to go out and get resources. Now, if my woman is contributing 100%, and I'm contributing 100 percent. I mean, we partners. But that's an issue with me, because if we partners and we both put 100 percent in, I'm just giving another point. I get what you're saying. Get what you're saying. That's you're a saying. blessing. That would be a blessing. But I'm saying it's another way you got to look at it, too. So like I understand. Woman, he it, understand what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah I but what, saying. what he's saying is and what I'm saying is here in these modern times. 
It's not going to be realistic because if you, in fact, want to have a woman and a good woman, she's going to have to have, to have a sense of not being 100% dependent on you because she hasn't been that way before you met her. Do you see what I'm saying? So if all of a sudden, now when she's with you, now she's feeling like instead of having all this space to move around in, she only has that space to move around in. that's what they say they want. They say they, they want a man to pay all the bills. They want a man to do all of this, all of that, where you want to be 100% dependent on a man. Listen, you you forgot the part. Sure, you forgot the part about that woman being the helpmate. Yeah, she gonna that be woman. Helpmate. Like when I say, when you designate to her those things that you need her to do. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Then she's going to do those things if, in fact, she is a good woman. That's not going to be a burden, but she has to have that freedom of being. Fe- Even though we move as one, she's still an individual that needs to feel like she has the freedom of movement. You're still two individuals. So if she feel like she's attached to you, like she can't make a move without you. See, like, check this out. A good wife, check this out. A good wife, she'll ask you for permission to do a certain thing. But another woman who ain't even got a husband will think, what? You asked me for permission? That's right. Like if a woman asks you, baby, what do you think about me being able to go do this? Uh, or, or after work, is it okay with you if I stop by this thing, go ahead and take care of that or whatnot? That's a great woman. And that's a beautiful thing right there when a woman will ask you Welcome. if it's okay for her to go do a thing because she knows she represents you. Welcome. And she wants to have your trust that she's going to go do that particular thing. Most women are not going to ask for permission. As a matter of fact, if a woman who don't have a man heard another woman asking her, even her, say her, her fiancé, say her fiancé, they're planning to get married, and she said, baby, what do you think about me going to do this? Is that okay with you? That other woman, as soon as she gets a chance, because she ain't never been in a position like that, girl, what is you doing? You asking that man? That's the reason that woman who said that will never get a man. You understand what I'm saying? Right. She'll never get a man. See, when, and that's the same type of woman talking about where all the good men at. They everywhere. <laughs> that woman just not on their radar. Because when they hear a woman talking like that, see again, men, we pay attention, we pay attention. We pay attention. And that's the type of woman who won't get a good man. Because she's not a good woman. Some women don't like to listen. You see what I'm saying? Some women don't like to take instruction. See, again, when we come up with all of uh, 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 abnormalities, a single parent household, that's an abnormality. That is. But we look at it like it's normal because we might see three generations of, of baby mama mother, like the grandmother, the mother, and the mother's child all might have children but ain't got no husband. That's abnormal. So listen, I know we got to get ready to wrap this thing up because you got some other things going. I got a client coming at full 30 myself. So what do you want to talk about? You want to wrap it up? What do you want to do? You got any questions, final questions? Do we got anybody on there that had a question and maybe we didn't recognize anything? Nobody asked no questions. Just somebody on here asked for some money. Mm. No questions, though. Yeah, but keep in mind, most women... Haven't been taught how to be a wife, just like most men haven't been taught how to be a husband. Right. So it becomes a learning process. And a lot of times these people, if they do get married, they'll get married, but they don't really, they don't really know how to go about that relationship because it's new to them and they don't have, say, like a guideline from like their mother and father still being married and together. One of them might have that situation, but say the other one don't. So they're just winging it, doing what they think is right. But because the person think is right, don't mean that it's right. Let me make three more points, and then we're going to wrap this up. I'm just going to say this. We have to learn to have a forgiveness mindset in those relationships because you got to remember she's not going to be perfect, and we're not going to be perfect. So we're going to make some mistakes. So if we don't want them to hold grudges towards us, we got to be able to not hold grudges. And speaking of grudges, that means 
We don't hold on to no grudge. Don't make it a grudge. You really don't want to go to sleep after night. I'm like this. If me and my woman have an argument, I ain't lying. I'm ready to hug it out right after we get done with the argument. I'm ready to hug it out because I don't want to be in the bed and I'm over here with my leg hanging off the bed and she over there. So, no, we want to be in the middle of the bed. You see what I'm saying? That way when you wake up, you can wake up still with, with everything right. That's what I suggest for people. Period. So have that forgiveness mindset. Don't hold grudges. And when you're having conversations, just seek to understand. Try to understand the other person's perspective. Even if you disagree with it, try to figure out. Because, again, we don't communicate the same. So try your best to understand where they're coming from. Even if you have to ask questions so you can get a better understanding. You see what I'm saying? And just don't listen to what she's saying just to react. That way we can help keep the peace in the household. It's all about that peace, man. It's modern here. There you go. Right. Now, I can only hope for those that have been watching this podcast, hopefully we didn't do a lot of confusion <laughs> or anything, and this whole thing is about just learning. Yeah. Just learning. That's it. Just learning, and we want all the relationships to eventually lead to a marriage if it's not already a marriage. And and uh, hopefully we gave some information that could be considered. I know everybody didn't necessarily agree with everything that I said, but at least consider it. You know, I don't call myself the man who knows everything, but I do know what I think I know. And I feel confident in certain things, and I'm definitely confident in the most highest leadership. That being said, Want everybody to have a very blessed and a very victorious day. Subscribe and share this podcast with someone that you know. All right. Salute. Shalom. Hallelujah. Stay tuned. Hallelujah.